Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we're beginning our project Crypto Asset Prediction and Leading Indicators. To get started, we're going to load our data with the Crypto Metrics API. So join me at Google Colab in a new code cell. We're going to access the console with the exclamation mark and then use pip to install a package. The package that we're installing is coinmetrics.api underscore client. Let's run the code cell to install the package into this Colab project. Then once the installation is complete, we can import from coinmetrics.api client, the coinmetrics client class. So just make sure that you spell it correctly and you have the casing. Then we can instantiate a client with coinmetrics client, the constructor. And we can print out the client to inspect its type. You can see this is a CoinMetrics client object from CoinMetrics.API client. Next up, we are going to get the asset metrics for our client. So let's create a new variable called metrics. We're going to use our client.getAssetMetrics function. Here I'm going to pass in what asset I want to get, such as a BTC for Bitcoin. As well, I can pass in the metrics that I want to get for that asset. So let's pass in a whole list of metrics, starting with price USD. That is self-explanatory. It refers to the price of the stock. Next, I'm going to get the ADRA Act count. So what does this mean? A lot of these metrics are abbreviated. This stands for addresses active count. This is the sum count of unique addresses that were active in the network, either as a destination or source of ledger change that day. So this is a property that we can get to help us predict price. And we can check which properties were actually leading indicators and had a strong effect on price. Another metric I want is cap market cur USD. So another abbreviated metric. This stands for capitalization market current supply USD. This is the sum USD value of the current supply of the coin. Another metric I'm going to use is cap MVRV cur. Note that there are tons of metrics you can use just by looking at the documentation for the coin metrics client. There's a whole page describing all the metrics that you have available. I'm just selecting some common ones. For example, capitalization MVRV current supply. This is the ratio of the sum USD value of the current supply to the sum realized USD value of the current supply. All right, next up, we are going to also pass in the NVT adjusted. So this stands for the ratio of the network value, commonly called market cap or current supply, divided by the adjusted transfer value. Another common metric is the VEL cur one year. So this stands for the velocity of the current supply over one year. As well, let's use TX count. We'll check out that metric. This is the transaction count, the sum count of transactions that day. A transaction is a bundle of intended actions to alter the ledger or blockchain initiated by the user, whether it's a human or a machine. As long as the transactions are recorded on the blockchain, they'll be used in the calculation of this metric. So whatever transaction is added to a block on the chain. As well, let's use TX, TFR, VAL, ADG, USD. This is another metric that stands for transactions, transfers, value adjusted USD. This is the USD value of the sum of native units transferred that day, removing noise and certain artifacts. Another metric I'm going to use is the supply cur. This stands for the current supply, the sum of all native units ever created and currently visible on the ledger or issued as of that day. One more metric we can try out is the hash rate. The hash rate, it represents self-explanatory, the mean rate at which miners are solving hashes that day. The speed at which computations are being completed across all miners in the network. Okay, so those are going to be our metrics. We can also pass in a start time for the asset metrics that we want to get, such as 2018 0101. 
we can also specify an end an end time like 2022-0101. And we can specify the frequency of the assets like one day or one D. This will store our metrics. So we can run the code cell and then let's create a new code cell and print out the value of the metrics. All right, so we just have a data collection object. Let's convert that to a pandas data frame. So I'm going to import the pandas library and then use pandas.dataframe and pass in my metrics. I'm going to store this as my metrics variable that's been overridden. Then you can call metrics.head to get the first five entries in the data frame. All right here we have our index column. We have the asset name. We have the date time with the year, the month, the day, as well as the time. The following that, all of the metrics that we wanted. All right, so we can grab all the metrics in this way via that convenient API. All right, let's take the time here and convert it to a date time because for building mathematical operations, we want to represent dates as a number instead of as a date time. So I'm going to take my metrics at the time column and I'm going to use pandas dot to date time and I'm going to convert that column. So I take the column, I'm going to convert it from this format of a string into a date time number and I'm going to then override the column. So then you can print out your data frame now and you'll see that this string will be converted to the date time format. So now it's much easier to work with math with that. I'm also going to take this time and convert it to my index column. So I'm going to create a new code cell, take my data frame and call on it the set index function, then pass in the name of the column that you want to use as the index column. Then you can inspect your data frame after the change. And you'll see that we now have an index column that is the time column. All right, if you want to save this for future use, then you can just take your metrics and call the function to underscore CSV. Then you can save this in a file such as metrics.csv. Then in your files tab, you'll have metrics.csv, which you can download. That is how we can load data via our API. Don't miss the next lecture. We're going to learn how to visualize the historical stock prices with matplotlib. Hello everyone and welcome back to our project, Crypto Asset Prediction and Leading Indicators. Previously, we loaded our data with the Crypto Metrics API. In this lecture, we're going to visualize our historical stock prices with matplotlib, a popular plotting library for Python. So we're going to select our coin metrics from our data set and convert them to float values to make sure that they all are the correct data type. Currently, we can inspect our data frame by getting its info function. And we can see that the data types of our columns are objects. Well, we want to convert those to a number type like a float or an int, but likely a float if you have decimal places. So for that, I'm going to create a new code cell and I'm going to take my data frame and override it. I'm going to pass in to a double array here, the list of all of the columns that I want to change to be float types. So we're going to pass in all of our asset names one by one, like cap MVRV current, NVT adjusted, velocity current one year, the address account, active count, then the transaction count. So you can look at your data frame for all of your metrics, as well as the transaction transfer value adjusted USD. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.